A band of Bavarian farmers came over to Catonsville in the mid-1840s. And within a few years, they gathered together, uh, built a small stone chapel that still stands today uh, up on Ingleside Avenue, just south of Route 40. And uh, they worshiped in German, as you would expect, being Bavarians. And, uh, but soon, within 10 or 20 years, they were worshiping also in English. Uh, uh, and they stayed together in that place until 1903, and then they did something very bold. They didn't have to do this. They decided to come into the village of Catonsville. Uh, remember, this was still a very rural area. They came in in 1903, right here on the same corner we're on now at Newburgh and Frederick, built our stone church, and uh, over the years, it was expanded. Uh, 1955, it was a big addition put on. 1997, they, they built uh, uh, even more. And uh, so that's the building that we inherited it and that we worship in today. Throughout Salem's history, and it certainly was my experience, that it always was very welcoming to newcomers. It wasn't a closed uh, congregation. It wasn't sort of a group of people hanging on to the past. It always seemed to be a group that was willing to embrace new folks. Uh, and to move toward the future. And when we came here in 1970, that was very much a moment of change nationally. A lot of uh, change happening in the nation, but also in churches. And there were some churches that were kind of digging in uh, and uh, not really open to new things. Uh, if they had an old hymn book, they were sticking to the old hymn book. Uh, if they had an old liturgy, they were sticking to the old liturgy. Uh, and it's my feeling that Salem really was open to change. And so I think there's always, at least in my experience, been a nice way in which newcomers have been embraced, in which the church has been open to change. Uh, and I think there's something very special. We're not a really large church. We're a church that's small enough that people can get to know one another. Uh, but at the same time, we're large enough that we do some really effective things. We have a wonderful music program. Uh, we have terrific uh, Sunday school as it's been reinvigorated over time. Uh, I think there's always been a real strong outreach to the community uh, and that I think has been a real mark of this congregation. Right now we're reaching out even farther to help establish a mission church in Canton. Well I think Salem has been really blessed with a number of uh, pastors who have not only in many cases been here for a considerable time but it really had a warm and embracing uh, effect on the congregation and the community. The congregation is so welcoming and it's so authentic and it comes out. And what, what I hear over and over again from people that are new to the church and especially those who join with us will say, I was welcomed so warmly by everyone. People came up and were genuinely interested in me and were glad that I was there. We came into Salem and just, wow, from the get-go when we walked in the door, all these people started coming up and immediately and just so welcoming and just very, very friendly. Um, the dynamic was incredible. You know, you saw young, old, you know, little kids, you know, it just, just this just robust kind of congregation. In the middle of the first hymn, at that time, our pastor emeritus, pastor, um, pastor Ed, came down. In the middle of the hymn, you know, it came right down and hi, 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 I'm Ed, I'm, you know, and you know, who are you? And you know, we said, this is, you know, I'm Amy, this is Ike, and uh, he said, you know, you know, we're welcoming you, you know, come on up, you know, we have an open communion, and you know, if you're, you know, if you're a baptized believer, you know, come join us, you know, we'd love to have you here, and, and I'll talk to you after the service. And um, you know, after the service, everything again, really wonderful. All these people, hi, welcome, who are you? Come on, you know, that kind of, we love the church, you know, we'd love to have you back. And we just, just had such a really warm presence. You know, my husband was really pensive at the moment, and we, we, you know, he turned to me, and you know, I said, he said, Amy, he goes, we found our church. And I said, well, you know, that's, that's incredible. And then, he, and, and, I, and then he said, I said, what happened there at communion? And he said, I don't know how to describe it. He said, it's just when I was up there, he said, I felt like there was just something that said, welcome back. When I first came to Salem, um, I talked with uh, members of the congregation. Um, something that you know always impressed me was, you know, I'd say, you know, tell me about this community that you're a part of, uh, and their eyes would light up. They would get, you know, they would get excited telling me about the things uh, that they're doing. They would get excited telling me about uh, some of the 
um, relief and aid projects that we get involved in uh, through through money that we uh, donate. They get involved, get excited about uh, things that we do, you know, for fun together to bring joy into people's lives, like uh, Salem Players and, uh, and, and uh, like the Salem Supper Club and some of that fun stuff that we do. Uh, they get excited about the music, the things that the, the things that we do. Um, in praise of God, uh, in our choirs, uh, through our praise team, uh, through various different uh, things that we do uh, as part of our life together, uh, kind of as a response to God's grace and God's love. It's been a wonderful experience to start and raise our family in the arms of this congregation because Salem is so unique and lucky to have a, a lot of young children and a very active Sunday school and it's been such a benefit, not only once our kids were in Sunday school, but even before that, because we were having our babies and we had the uh, Stitch Crafters bring us a blanket and really felt like this is a very vibrant congregation that's really involved with each other. Um, even though we have the wonderful, beautiful, comforting trappings of the traditional religious service we have, you know, our beautiful altar, we have a sung liturgy, we have things that we do in each church service that are familiar, uh, but it's all in a really, really positive framework. I think one thing that's unique and wonderful about Salem is that I find that we are, it's always focusing on the positive message of God in our lives and what Jesus taught us. We're really lucky to have at Salem is the combination of a really active, involved, dedicated congregation of lay people, plus we have been blessed with amazing pastors. Something I really love about Salem is that uh, we have a fairly decent amount of ethnic diversity and people from different parts of the world, and I love that my kids are really good friends with uh, you know, the family that we helped to bring from Africa and it's just so sweet to see them together and it just sounds cheesy but they hug and my kids are really pale like me and they're all entwined and just loving each other and adoring each other's company and it's nice to see that in our church. Our children's sermons are great. Um, they're really participatory. I love how Don Schwartz makes them a real kind of off the cuff. They always involve some everyday object or everyday situation and it really you just see the kids get drawn right in and then he gets them all drawn in real thoroughly and then you know he he escorts them into the whole point of what he's trying to get across it's so effective and they you know they, they enjoy it and i think i think that they uh they remember the stuff and certainly we are able to refer back to that stuff uh, at home. We walked to Salem, and the very first day we were there, more than one person came up and said, oh, are you new? Is this your first time here? And I think this is one of the things that Salem does very well. They're very mindful and very intentional about seeking out new members and uh, making them feel part of the community. I think Salem is a very accepting church. I think it accepts people where they are in their faith journey. Uh, we don't try to uh, enforce doctrine on people. We listen to what they have to say and we respond to it. Salem gives, gives us an opportunity for outreach. We've had uh, four refugee families that we've sponsored and those have been wonderful experiences. The pastors are, are wonderful teachers, wonderful examples of how Christians should live. Salem's support when people have illnesses or are experiencing ex extraordinary difficulties. And this year has been one of those years for me. It has not been a day in almost the whole year where a card or a letter or a phone call doesn't come to me. Think, thinking about being very dramatic and just dumping all these cards and showing the overwhelming support that I have gotten. I just, I just think Salem has been a wonderful place for our family. 
I can look back and see what an influence uh, Salem had on our lives and our children's lives. And our lives are better because we, we've been here and I hope other people's lives are better. The Salem was making impact in a lot of different ways. A really very basic one and, and something that you can actually uh, 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 count and that is the monies that we take in that our members contribute um, and we run all our, our ministries. Everything is based on the contributions from our, our membership. 26% of that money last year in 2012, 26% of that money was given away to the larger church, to other charities, other organizations, other ministries. And um, that, that's a, that's a, a really eye-popping figure because that is very uncommon in, in um, most churches across all the various traditions. So we're, we're very um, blessed here uh, that we can share from our abundance. I think another way that we're making a big impact uh, in our community uh, and in the personal lives of our congregants are our small group ministries. We have lots of, of smaller uh, groups that meet together over a variety of different issues as you would imagine, uh, Bible study, but things like uh, the men's prayer breakfast that meets on Wednesday morning, our stitch crafters that come together. We, we have lots of what we call fabric ministries. Stitch crafters, we have a group that makes prayer shawls for those who are sick and we, we bless those shawls and send those out. We make quilts and we send those off to Lutheran World Relief. Many go to Africa and Asia. Uh, our impression of Salem was uh, we were uh, really pleased to see how welcoming the church was. One of the things that was very good to see was that this church was a growing church, a church that people wanted to uh, um, be a part of. Um, I love the diversity um, of uh, the different people that are involved, um, but also the different types of activities that we get involved in. One of the things we did with uh, the, the Bible study topic we did on the Gospel of John, Normally, sometimes you have that, that, you know, as a person who leads and facilitates the discussion, you always have the challenge of, you know, getting people to be involved, and uh, I didn't find it too difficult to do that. It was kind of nice to see and refreshing to see that people in the room were uh, just as interested in, in, the, in, in the various different um, gospel lessons, and it was great to see that um, people were engaged and wanting to be part of it and made for a very good um, meeting in time. Well, you know, it says in the Bible, uh, one of my favorite verses is from 1 John, it says, we love because God first loved us. And I think at Salem, we are really, I mean, first and foremost, we are claimed by that love, uh, about God's grace, the fact that God, uh, God's love for us, God is way better at loving us uh, and forgiving us than we are at messing up and it's just always going to be that way we're just always connected and saved by God through our baptism and I think the number one thing we're about is just kind of sharing that love sharing uh, our love for God and sharing God's love for us through the good news of Jesus Christ that we celebrate every Sunday in worship and we sing praises uh, we repent of our sins we try to do better uh, and we try to reach out to the community uh, with God's love through what we do and what we say. One of our characteristics is we embrace all kinds of different people and different ways of thinking. So what gathers us together is not uniform thinking. We're not all Democrats, we're not all Republicans, we don't all agree on all the social issues. What gathers us together is our love for Jesus and, and our desire to be in mission for the sake of the world. And that's what gathers us together. I think the other thing is also the fact that we have the, the church as a whole has goals. And sometimes it's really hard for us to think beyond just the present things we have to do. And having long-term goals, and we have nine goals, is that what it is? It's nine goals to kind of go after and really think about it. And say, hey, these are things that we can see ourselves growing in certain areas, and things that we would like to accomplish. God has gathered us together, and we're gathered in the name of Jesus. We're a community that, at our heart, loves Jesus. And our proclamation, 
what, what we readily share with others is that we're saved by God's grace. Because of that, everything we do is in response to that grace.